Well, good morning, person of YouTube, or I guess to say people, or persons, whoever's watching. Now, you may have remembered several months ago, I posted a uh, video about using the Franklin Planner as a uh, daily planner and doing goal planning and stuff like that. Over the course of several months, I realized I wasn't going to carry that big old book around. And um, while I love the whole system, I just was not going to carry that big binder anymore. So um, I've moved back to a bullet journal. And um, so what I have here is I have a notebook and then I have a notebook cover that I actually made. Um, just so you can see. Made it right here in Pueblo, Colorado. Made in Colorado. It's pretty cool, huh? I don't remember where I got the stamp from. I will put a link to um, where I got these leather press stamps from. But it turned out pretty cool. Um, one of my little hobbies has been um, to do some leather working and um, maybe a couple of the other things that I've done. Um, I made this wallet uh, several years ago, actually. And um, I really like the size of it. I just sent off a notebook and another wallet uh, to one of my sons in Germany. Um, so he'll get that in the next day or two. And um, so he'll have something made by dad. So anyway, the uh, going back to a bullet journal, I had been using um, field notes for my bullet journal and carrying them around, but it got where I wasn't um, able to really gather up enough information into the books before I was filling them up and moving on to them, moving on to another book. Um, so I was having to go back to uh, my secret drawer over here and um, find the old notebook to look at uh, information. So I went back to um, several sizes of books. Uh, one that I had used in the past. I have to look around in my drawer and find it is um, this size of book, this Claire Fontaine Life Unplugged, and it worked pretty well. Um, just different types of notes that I took, uh, sometimes in bullet journal form, sometimes just in notes. But anyway, I went back and uh, I've been using these uh, Tomo River notebooks, seven C's, and um, I had an extra one that I started to use as kind of a notebook, a note catcher, and decided I would go ahead and turn it into back into a bullet journal. Uh, when I made the cover for this, I made it just a little bit small, so I had to cut down the um, cover so it would fit in. But, you know, this is for the first notebook I've ever made. That's all right. It worked pretty well. So anyway, I, um, I have the same functionality and the same types of... Um, really uses that I would get out of the Franklin Planner with a package that I think is going to serve me a little bit better. So here on the first uh, page, first three pages, actually, I have the table of contents. I know the bullet journal people call that an index, but the um, pedantic part of me says an index is in the back and a table of contents is in the front. So the table of contents. Um, I started using this book um, to take notes for some readings. So the first 15 pages were ramblings. And... Um, I had to, uh, in order to get the notebook in um, and to do the, the stamping, I had to um, get it wet and then I went and put the notebook in wet. So the first few pages got a little bit, um, I don't know, water ran through there, but I think it turned out looking pretty cool. I don't know. So anyway, these are just some reading notes that I was taking. Um, for the days and then I decided I was going to repurpose this to a classic bullet journal started to work on a key I didn't like it. So I put a sticker on there um, And then here's really the key that I'm using right now I've changed my tasks from bullets to boxes when I complete them. I fill it in if they're in progress I put a line through it if I migrate it an arrow forward if I schedule it or put it in the future planner And we'll look at that um, We put that in a um, A backwards arrow and then if I have an event that I want to keep make note of, I'll put a circle. Appointments are going to be a triangle. If I have um, uh, research, I'll put a question mark. And then if I just want to keep track of some stuff that I did, I go ahead and put the box, but I'll put a check mark in it so I list it after completement. All right, just had another field note sticker there. So here's my future log. 
Right now I've got um, six months, started in May. I actually probably should have started this in June, but it started in May. And with the COVID quarantine, who knows what's going on. Um, so I don't have a lot of events going on here. Hopefully I, in here I can have first day of school and we will be back. I've got um, some things coming up. So um, my goal is to use this like I would the, the uh, calendars in the Franklin Planner. I'll put everything in here on the future log first. Um, and then I'll refer to that every day. I've started to use some little tabs. Um, just these little post-it um, flags. And I can just put them on, fold them over, and they work to a place that I can flip to. And as you'll see here, you look, there's several along here. So I can go back and refer to those. When I get um, through a point, I may take it off. So here's my future log. And so this is where I'm going to I put, um, just like Ryder Carroll did in the original, the dates, and then the days of the week down there. Um, I had started checking off the days that I did them, but um, with quarantine, what the heck. Um, and then I have the master task list for the month. Um, this will uh, carry into future planning um, quite a bit when I plan out the month. Um, again, right now during the quarantine, um, with online school, there's not a lot I need to put in there. So I do have some things I still need to, to uh, check off on the list. Um, I started writing the notes here. Um, just... Uh, this was back when I was using the dots and bullets, and so I just, as I completed things, I would check them off. Um, meetings from note meetings. And I, then I got to thinking, you know, I need to have the same information that I had in my Franklin because that my the time power system is powerful. So I went and put my prioritizing prioritizing questions here, um, and you can see it go back to my index or my table of contents. I have them listed right there. Well, I guess I don't have the prioritizing questions, um, but they're. Um, I just have things listed so I can go back and refer to them. So my prioritizing questions, how I build my list and how I prioritize the list every day. Unifying principles, these are the timeless truths that I try to live my life by. Uh, working on some long-range goals, and unless there's not a lot of them, I don't need to have a bunch of long-range goals. I don't, I don't feel like I need to work on everything. I'm um, looking towards uh, redoing my teaching license one more time, so I'll be retiring in the next five or six years. So um, some of these goals are going to be changing. And then in order to meet those long-range goals, I have intermediate goals. Okay, so like I did have a long-range goal up here. Um, engage in private Bible study daily, beginning April 17th, 2019. So one of my goals to get to that is to read through the Bible in 2020. I'll show you on the daily pages how I, how I keep track of that. I'll be redoing my uh, teaching license, a few other things. Um, here's an idea. Remove social media apps from phone. I haven't done very well with that. And then we go just go ahead and get into uh, daily notes, meeting notes. Again, more daily notes. And I've got a couple of trackers that I've put in here. Um, I started getting the corn gut um, from sitting on my butt the whole time during this quarantine or stay at home. So I worked on some exercise trackers. I was using a, um, some resistance bands. And then now, uh, just here recently, our gym has opened back up for personal training. So I've been going back to the gym. Um, I've got one other day that I need to mark on here. I think, yeah, I went on Friday. So I need to mark that. Um, that's Top Fitness with Danny Chavez here in Pueblo. And then I also have a, a slot for cardio when I go for a walk. Um, so we've got that. Again, more daily notes. One of the things I did learn, I started to plan out a day before I was finished with the day, and I ended up with a lot of notes. Um, I do have a couple of beehives, you may have noticed on my channel, some hive inspections going on. So I've got a page for hive inspection record, and if I go back to my table of contents, um, I have inspection record to tell me to go to page 33. When I fill this one up, I'll just go to the next page, and that'll go here. I'll thread it here by putting the number of whatever the next page is. That'll be the next one, and then I'll also include that over here on that. I'm working on my debt tracker, so that's just getting started. Um, again, notes, daily notes, so activities, things I want to do, also some notes of what I've taken, uh, meeting notes, and more daily notes. Starting to do just a little more journaling in there. I've started on the gratitude log, but obviously I'm not um, keeping up with it very well. Um, I'm a weather nerd, so um, I'm starting to track some weather. I am part of the Coco Raws or Colorado Community Collaborative 
rain and hail survey. Um, so I've got a rain gauge out there. So um, I'll be writing the night weather all the time, of course, putting it on a website. Um, this was a page that I was trying out a layout because I wanted to do, um, I was afraid I was going to miss some appointments, particularly on this time when, you know, we really don't have to get dressed in nice clothes and get out of the house much. Um, but I didn't like the way the setup was, so I abandoned the page. And then I put the um, a Beaufort scale to kind of understand, um, give you a, a visual indication of kind of some wind speeds and wind levels in case I don't have an anemometer around, which I do have one now. Again, more notes um, from a daily note. Meetings, meeting notes, um, daily notes. Again, daily notes maybe a little bit more long-term, um, no, or long short-form journaling. I think just more notes. This this covers Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then I took a few days off, or no Wednesday, and then Thursday, so almost an entire week, and then a few more notes here. Uh, that use this blotter paper because um, I use do use a fountain pen. Um, so here we are uh, with the daily notes through today, and um, I have completed this. So I would fill that in just like that. Did my daily devotions. Fill that in. Um, I've started getting uh, trying to put in a daily um, verse uh, that I received from an app. Then I have my appointment here at the gym at 5:30 today. I know it's Memorial Day, but um, you know you get fat whether it's a holiday or not. I started to look at a. Um, weekly layout and um, so I put this down I really wasn't thrilled with the way this turned out so I came up with another one so I can have some weekly priorities um, this is the last week of school so we have several things we're we'll working on I'm obviously Memorial Day of gym but I have a meeting um, two meetings on that day um, I will we'll be checking out of school on Thursday or Friday so I have to have get my grades done um, some things coming up with the county fair um, those types of deals and then another page, um, secret page. So that's what we've got. This book has 480 sheets in it, so it's going to last me a long time. Um, the pen that I'm using is this Twisby Eco. Got it filled with um, Qternity ink from Noodlers. Let's see if I can find that bottle. There it is, black and blue, it's called Qternity. Uh, but I don't even find that name anywhere on here. But um, it's a extremely fast drying ink. It really was made for people that use uh, right fountain pens with their left hand so that they don't smudge it when they write across. Um, but it dries pretty fast, so my blotter paper, it does get some on there. Now, I'll admit that when I'm at my desk working on it, I might grab any one of a number of fountain pens that I might happen to have uh, ink in at the time. So right now I have uh, ink in four pens. So I have the Twisby, I try to use that every day. And the cool thing about this one is it's a piston filler. So it's got a, a big ink capacity, so it'll last a long time, and I've never had this pen dry out. Uh, extra fine nibs, so it fits within these pages really well. I uh, also have this Pelican M200 that I just bought, also with an extra fine nib. I use this um, for journal writing, but I'll, also if I grab it, I write in here. Um, I think in this pen right now is Noodler's Black. I have my Lamy 2000 with a fine nib, and this has, I'm not sure what ink it has in it right now. Something blue, Noodler's Blue of some sort. I like this pen. It's, um, it's so smooth. Classic. Um, profile you've got the ink in ink view window there um, it's just very comfortable in the hand uh, I'm not sure when they came up with this in the 60s they came up with this design and it's um, they still produce the pen and then my um, latest this is a Parker 51 this is um, I think this is a Franken pen um, because it's got two different um, I don't think this cap actually came with the pen but I bought the pen because it matches an old Parker 51 pencil that I have. It was actually my grandmother's. It doesn't quite match perfectly. I think this color is the buckskin beige, and that's the like the most rare. And um, they go for hundreds of dollars, sometimes even thousands of dollars. So I won't get one that matches perfectly. But this pen writes extremely smoothly with the hooded nib, doesn't dry out, has a large ink capacity. It was restored before I got it, but there it is. It says the Parker 51 to fill, press, 
the rib bar, farm move six times. And use super chrome ink. I know the ink I have in here is Parker Quink. So that's a relatively dry ink. Um, but anyway, it's a cool pin. So that's what I'm using. Um, but I still try to spend time going back into my goals, my unifying principles, my prioritizing questions so that I come up with my daily list. And right now, you know, Memorial Day, I don't have a lot on my list. You know, I could write down Mo, uh, barbecue, those types of things, but don't really need to. But anyway, you can see this has the same functionality that I had in the um, Franklin Planner with the ability to be a little more flexible as there may be times that I don't use anything so I don't have pages that get wasted. I think this particular book, um, the way the number of pages and the excellent paper that it has probably ought to last me um, a year and a half to two years. And if that's the case, this is going to be a pretty good resource. Uh, just be a tremendous amount of information in there. So that's what I've got. Yeah, love feedback if you got any or comments or questions. Thank you. Have a great Memorial Day. Remember those that um, gave the sacrifice for the freedoms that we have. Bye.